It's Tisha B'Av, the ninth of Av. It's a fast day now. I don't know why they call it a fast day. Usually they go slow. I never heard anybody saying, oh, that fast went so quickly. <laughs> Usually go slow. For me, the most difficult was it's a day of mourning, national mourning, and till one o'clock we sit on a low chair. So that's uh, a little tough for my back. And, um, you know, the not eating part is not the, the most difficult, but um, drinking would be great. Oh, you could drink, it'd be simple. But uh, listen, it is what it is. And we uh, manage. Uh, Michael, if you can mute yourself. And, um, but it's a national morning of the Jewish people. Destruction of two holy temples and many other calamities that befell the Jewish people. But even though it's a time of calamity, we see the flip side of things. In the calamity is the healing. In the pain, in the suffering, is the solution and is the redemption. So, we need to find the redemptive quality of the day and the ultimate redemption of Mashiach now. Okay. So, on this day, we do not say, we don't give greetings to each other because a time of mourning um, with a heavy heart, so the law is you don't greet. So I'm not going to say hello. I'll just... Uh, Actually, go straight into the Tanya. Just make sure everybody's with us. I think everybody's here. Almost everybody's here. Yeah. So it should be a meaningful fast. It should be an easy fast. It should be a redemptive one. Personally, and collectively for all of us for the final redemption long overdue okay Tanya today brought to you from Chabad Zuch and Gideshin, where it's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you Tanya we begin the fourth letter. This letter, as many of the letters, are, is about tzedakah, about charity. Charity most definitely means giving money, but it also is act of acts of loving kindness. But generally, when we say the word tzedakah, charity, it means the the uh, giving of money is a charitable act to to those that need whether it's a person that needs a community that needs an organization that needs that does for the community whatever the case may be so we begin with a uh, a phrase that that Israel shall be redeemed only by the virtue of tzedakah, which is a term from Maimonides. As, a, as it says in Isaiah, the Shabbat with tzedakah and its repatriates shall be redeemed through charity. So it's a time of redemption. How's that? Through being charitable. The word tzedakah comes from the word tzedek. Tzedek means righteousness. So therefore, charity is that act of righteousness, righteousness 
that brings about redemption. Redemption of the Jewish people from the exile and the ultimate return to Zion as it is meant to be in the ultimate manner. Right, and redemption, parenthetically, that's brought to the Jewish people is, ipso facto, hence, is brought to the entire world, because the whole world is to be redeemed. So, it's written in Tehillim, King David, in Psalms, Tzedek, the fun of Yahalech, that Tzedek, again, the word righteousness, which means also charity, as we'll see later on, charity, or tzedek, let's use the word tzedek right now, shall go before him, before God. Now, the way it's written is that it will cause something to go before God. It should have been written, it shall go before God. In other words, your righteous acts of loving kindness, of giving, shall go before God. But it says it will cause something to go. Hmm. What is, what's it causing? It's causing something else to go before God. Hmm. And that's what uh, we need to understand. And that kind of charity, that kind of tzedek of righteousness is redemptive. So this concept can be understood by first understanding a verse, another verse in Psalms that it says that in your behalf my heart says seek my face or seek my inwardness seek my inwardness and then seek so what does that mean to seek inwardness It means to say that the heart has an external expression of it and it has an internal expression. So there's many layers, but two basic layers of the heart, two basic feelings of the heart of love, external and one internal or inward. So let's understand that. The external part of the heart to gain access to it, that it should have a, a fiery passion, a love that flares up, that a love that is expressed in your connection to the Almighty, to God. It comes by understanding and knowing about God, about his greatness, about him as creator, about him in your life. So when you meditate upon your connection, God's connection to the world, that will give birth to, can give birth at least. I mean, I'll go to saying it will, it, can't, it will give if we do this to a, 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 a passionate desire to connect to God. That's called external. Why is it external? External is like the cup, the mug. The handle, the way you have on something, is the external. What's inside is internal, right? What's inward? This is external, the handle on. So this is only, well, I have a handle on something so I can have the something, right? That I can, wish it was, I could have something, but I can't. Um, so it's like a means to an end. It results in something. Having a handle on this gives me the result that I could have. The ultimate purpose of it is a drink from it. So external, means then that the love of God that you have in, in your heart that results from a meditation. In other words, something's causing it. You're, you're thinking. If you, if you never think about God, 
you'll never have a feeling towards him. If you think about him, and if you think about, just let me just think a, a moment about the, and digress for a moment. Just think about the blessings that you have in your life. Don't think about what you don't have. Think about what you do have. Life itself. Right? Health. Maybe there's something lacking in your health, but whatever. I mean, there's... I'm not going to go through the, uh, the check-off points of the things that we have. And to be grateful and to acknowledge are plenty are plenty and that's just the things we have then there is about God as creator God in, in the universe to meditate and contemplate the vastness and then that is God as creator then there's God himself beyond being the creator and how he treasures us and our connection to him that's something that will result in that meditation in a, a desire to connect so it's external because it's caused by something but then there is an internal part of the heart the innermost point of the heart the depth of the heart that transcends your awareness and understanding it's not it's not resulted in your understanding that creates the feeling. In other words, the feeling is deep down, much beyond your awareness. Out of the depths do I call unto you, God, from the depths of the heart. By way of analogy, we know that some things that in, in mundane things in our lives, or maybe not mundane is the right word, but not in relationship to a connection to God, but things that are really important to us. And something happens, right, that um, that hinges on our, on this, that hinges on something that's very vital to, to me, whatever it is. That touches the depths of your heart that what would happen is that you're going to say and do things that may not be um that transcends logic and, and reason you, you 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 start speaking um you babble <laughs> lack of a better word because something is touched so deep um like a parent's connection to a child right I've had this a little while back of someone close to who son, you know, died in an overdose. And, and, and it touched so deeply. And even the father was really, the father and son did not have a great relationship. But it's still a father-son relationship. And it touched so deeply that you know, the, the love was so deep that he was speaking, he was babbling. Couldn't, he couldn't speak anything coherent for even two weeks later. I mean, that, that giving that is just a metaphor. I've said something can touch so deeply. Well, precisely so is the surface of the heart that's unique because it's not coming from Bina. The first one is Bina. Bina is understanding. When you understand something, so it produces a feeling. So you understand your, you know, your connection to God and relationship and so on. You appreciate it, and you, so it, it results in something that we call external. Here we're talking something that comes from Chachma. It's Chachma is the power of what? It's beyond. It's the, it's the source of intelligence, but it itself is beyond intelligence. It's not defined by intelligence. And therefore, it's the vehicle, the, 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 the vessel to contain in it the Ein Soif, the infinite of God. And, and that actually is the love of the 
divine of the Jewish soul that defines the Jewish soul. Something that we learned in the first part of Tanya in chapter eighteen and nineteen, right? That the soul would that the, that as a result we would give up our lives rather than you know it's the sword or the cross. Well, for the most part, Jews took the, the sword, even if they didn't live for God. They died. Why? Because that inward part of the soul revealed itself. That chachma of the soul revealed itself. Now, in the reference we're talking about over here, it's not about that. It's not about dying. Actually, we're going to see. It's about living with this. How do you live with this? This is something way beyond. That touches the core essence of your being. That that transcends any reason and logic that would lead a person to 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 die as a Jew rather than give up their faith. So yet this is something that is meant for all of for every Jew in particular is you know the the, the lesson will also have um, has importance and value for someone who isn't Jewish at the same time. Um, as we will see as we continue, <laughs> uh, as we continue, because that's the, 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 the end of the lesson in the middle of the thought. But the question arises is that the love that emanates from this spark of chokhma that defines the Jewish soul, um, how do you attain that? You know, righteous people live that way. But how do we, as regular folk, reach that level of divine service that touches such a deep place? Dying is one thing. Living with it is completely other. It's completely another thing. And that's what we need to understand. How, how can you um, access that part? To access your awareness and your understanding and that you bring yourself to think about, contemplate, even meditate upon the reality of God, the authenticity of God, how God fills the world, how he transcends the world, how ultimately there's, he's the only reality. And that that brings you to an appreciation of the presence of God. And then upon that, that, you know, what you have been personally even gifted with, right? and, and the truth is it's, it's beyond that. And all of that you, you, again, think about, meditate on, that will result in something. It will result in, in a feeling of some sorts, and it may not be a full-blown passion, but it'll be at least something that we'll have. Here we're talking about something. That's ex the external love. The internal love. Internal is, it's there not because of a, a result of me doing something, but a result of what I am. Right? And, uh, and therefore, by the way, this parallels in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a manner with everybody because everybody's created in the image of God. But we'll see is how that plays itself out. That's the beginning of the thought to be continued. Any questions, any thoughts? Does this come from the divine spark? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely, Davida. We have some people joining us. That it's no longer Tisha B'Av. The fast is over. <laughs> the fast ain't over here. We've got another five hours. Israel, the fast is over. So for Cherise, it's over for her. It's over for Stan in England. Or maybe not. No, it's not over in England yet. Almost. Right? 
Well, in Australia, it's over. Australia, though, right now, it's like not even 6 o'clock in the morning. In California, it's three hours before. Okay. <laughs> All right, and I understand it's a hot day around the globe. All right, keep yourselves cool. And most importantly, we want Mashiach now. We need the redemption. Genug shoin, ad masai. It's enough. Enough suffering in the world. Plenty of suffering. It's time. And Mashiach came. God should bring final redemption and end all of the suffering and bring the good times. Hmm. All right. I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine coming to you for Chabad Zuch and Kadesh in Montreal, Canada. It's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you the time you have. Uh, an amazing teacher of the rest of it, if you're still in it. Be well.